Babylon was ruled by an evil king named Nimrod during those days. Nimrod was an idol worshipper, and he considered himself to be an incarnation of God. He was an evil man and punished his people as he willed. When Nimrod heard that the prophet had smashed his idols, he was very angry. The prophet was tied in chains, and he was brought into the palace. How dare you smash the idols of our gods? asked Nimrod. They were mere idols, not gods, replied the prophet. Tell me, who is the true god then? asked the king. There is only one god who can grant life and death. He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true god. I can give life and death too. I will show you. Nimrod asked his soldiers to bring two of his slaves into the court. The slaves were brought, and they were asked to kneel down. Nimrod asked his soldier to kill the first slave. The soldier struck the slave with his sword and killed the slave instantly. Then he asked the soldier to kill the second slave. The soldier raised his sword, but just before striking, the king asked him to stop. Then the king looked at the prophet and said, You see, I can give death, and I can give life too. But the prophet remained nonchalant and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the sun rise from the east. Can you change that and make the sun rise from the west instead? The king was baffled. Then the prophet put forward many such arguments. The king was speechless. The king realized that there was no point in confronting the prophet, so he let the prophet walk away freely. Prophet Ibrahim salam preached to the people of Babylon for many years. But nobody was willing to listen, except for his wife Sarah and his nephew Lut salam. He soon realized that the people of Babylon were never going to listen to his words. So he decided to leave the city with the two followers he had. The Prophet decided to ask his father one last time if he was willing to join him. But his father refused, and the Prophet bid him goodbye for the last time. And that day, the three of them left the city of Babylon. The Prophet was sad because he was leaving the city he loved so much. But he wanted to spread the message of Allah to as many people as he could. And for this, he had to leave Babylon. It was a long, hard journey through the desert. They traveled through Syria, Palestine, and Egypt. Prophet Ibrahim salam spoke about Allah's message to the people he met along the way. They helped the poor, and they did many good deeds on the way. When the people heard the Prophet, many of them started doubting their practice of worshipping the idols. When they reached the Dead Sea, Lut salam decided to part ways and settle down there. He wanted to preach Allah's message to the local people. The Prophet thought this was a good idea and wished him all the luck. The Prophet and his wife continued their travel. Once it so happened that they entered the territory of an evil king. Sarah was a very beautiful woman. When the local people saw her, they were quite enchanted by her looks. The king soon came to know about this beautiful woman who was accompanying the Prophet. But he didn't know that she was the wife of the Prophet. He asked his soldiers to bring the Prophet to him. The Prophet was brought into the palace, and the king asked who was the lady accompanying him. Ibrahim salam knew that if he had told the truth that Sarah was his wife, then they would not hesitate to kill him and take her. He thought of an idea, 
and told them that she was his sister. Please bring your sister to the palace tonight, said the king. I want to meet this woman. Everyone in the kingdom is talking about her beauty. The prophet had no option now. He agreed and went to his wife. You have to come with me to meet the king, said the prophet. Sorrow was confused, and she asked him why. I don't know the reason, but whatever happens, do not ever tell these people that you are my wife. I have told them that you are my sister. Sarah agreed, and she accompanied the prophet to the palace. When the king saw Sarah, he was enchanted by her beauty, asked her to come close to him, and as soon as she reached him, he tried to take hold of her, but the moment he raised his hand, they froze. It was a miracle. The king was scared. He tried his best to move his hand, but he couldn't. He realized that only Sara could help him, so he begged her. Please help me. I will never try to harm you again. Sara agreed, and she prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When she prayed, his hands got cured miraculously. When the king realized that his hands were healed, the stupid king tried to take hold of Sara again. <laughs> what a fool he was! But the moment he raised his hands, they froze again. The king cursed himself for being so stupid and requested Sara once again to cure him. I am sorry, I, I am so sorry for trying to harm you, he said. Please, pray to your God and cure me. I will never harm you again. That's a promise. Sara was a kind woman, so she prayed to Allah and the king's hand got cured for the second time. The king realized that Sara was not an ordinary woman. You are unlike any other woman I have seen, and your god is so powerful, he said. I wish to give you a small gift. Please accept one of my maid servants. Her name is Hajar, and she will help you with your chores. In the meantime, the Prophet was waiting impatiently to know what was going on. He sighed a big relief when he saw Sara walking in unharmed. What happened? he asked her. Allah taught that evil king a lesson, she said. And he gave me an Egyptian maid as a gift. Her name is Hajar. The Prophet continued preaching to the people for many years. He spoke about Allah's message to people in different lands. He had grown quite old by now, and his hair had turned gray. But he continued with his mission vigorously. His wife, Sara, had grown old too. She was sad that she couldn't give birth to a child. She was way too old to give birth now. So she thought of an idea. She asked the Prophet to marry their servant Hajar anha, who was young and beautiful. The Prophet refused at first, but later he obliged, as he longed for a child of his own. Prophet Ibrahim salam, got married to Hajar anha. Sara prayed to God to bless the couple with a child. God heard her prayers and he soon blessed them with a child. I will call you Ismail, said the Prophet. The Prophet loved Ismail so much, but his happiness didn't last for long. One night, when the Prophet was sleeping, he had a revelation from God. God asked him to take his wife Hajar and his newborn son Ismail to a certain place and leave them. The Prophet was confused at first. He loved his son so much, but he knew that he had to follow Allah's commands. He went to Hajar and woke her up. Get Ismail and get ready for a long journey, he said. Hajar trusted her husband, and without questioning him, she took Ismail and left with him. 
Prophet Ibrahim السلام, took his wife and newborn son into the desert. They traveled through the desert for a very long time. They walked for many days, and most of their food and water were exhausted. Finally, they reached a dry valley of the desert near Al Marwa mountain. It was a barren land, and there was no sign of life here. There were no trees and no water anywhere in sight. Then, without saying any word, the Prophet started walking back. He left the mother and child alone in that barren valley. They only had a small amount of food and water with them, but that wouldn't even last for two days. Hajar hurried after him. Where are you going, leaving us all alone? She shouted. But the Prophet kept walking and didn't utter a word. She called him again and pleaded him to come back. But the Prophet didn't even look back, and he kept walking away. In spite of her cries for help, when she saw the Prophet was silent, she realized that he was not acting on his own. She realized that he must have received commands from God to act in such a way. Did Allah command you to leave us in the desert? She cried. The Prophet shook his head. Then his noble wife said, Do not worry, we are not going to be lost, since Allah, who commanded you, is with us. The Prophet continued walking without looking back. Do you know what happened to Hajar radiallahu anha and her son? Watch the next episode to learn more. There are more stories of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam waiting for you in the next episode. Keep watching our channel. If you liked the video, don't forget to click that subscribe button and stay updated on all our videos. Please tell your friends about the channel as well. That's all for today. Goodbye.